So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to moderate this panel. Um, I find this quite exciting. Um, I would like to introduce to you um, the other panelists. First of all, to my right here, Victor Siamudala. He is the executive director of the Casa Secretariat, based in northern Botswana, as far as I'm informed. Um, then, second, I would like to introduce Ines Carstensen. Um, she is the only lady on the, on the panel. She is the managing director of Futurist. Um, third, um, to my left here, Mr. Jens Hulvershorn. Um, he is also um, very active in, in the Futuris initiative and he is also the director of marketing and sales of Gebico. Gebico is uh, one of the leading study tour operators in Germany, I would say. Following that, um, all the way to my left there, Mr. Thomas Wollenstein. He's the Vice President of uh, Central and Southern Africa for the German Development Bank, KFW. On my right side, um, Mr. Christoph Heinrich, um, who is in charge of nature conservation for the Worldwide Fund for Nature Conservation in Germany, the WWF Germany. And last but not least, uh, to my left over here, Mr. Usman Ndiaye. Um, he is the Regional Director for Africa of the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Okay, so um, in the introductions it has already been said that um, we should now move, or the purpose of this discussion is to move more from the vision, from the fantasy to concrete action. So in order, so this doesn't uh, kind of stay a daydream. So I think it's very important to kind of discuss what exactly can be done um, in order to make sustainable tourism <coughs> a positive force um, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the Kaza area. Um, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Victor Siamudala on my right-hand side here. So you are the one who is doing the work on the ground, right? Yes, yes. So you're a very important person when it comes to implementing all of this. Um, so I would like to know from you what exactly is the Casa Secret Secretariat planning to do in the near future uh, to develop tourism in the Casa area. And we're not just talking about tourism, we're talking about sustainable tourism, environmentally sustainable, um, uh, creating positive benefits for the local population. Um, so we have already heard about the great tourism potential of the area that you're working in. Uh, but I would like to know, so what exactly are you planning to do in terms of, I don't know, management plans, visitor management, um, how, and especially how you are planning to develop the less developed areas of the Kaza region? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity that you've given to us as Kaza to be present at the ITB, and in particular for this panel discussion. Yeah, in answering your question, I think I'd like to address the question from three angles. One, what is it that the para countries have already done so far in terms of tourism development? The second part is, where are we in terms of this uh, tourism development, and what are the next steps that the five countries would like to uh, undertake in order to actualize the vision of the Casa TFCA? You realize that um, last year the five governments actually commissioned a study on how best to harmonize the policies for natural resource management and uh, tourism development. That study was concluded and it will be tabled before the Casa ministers at their next meeting in June so that they can make uh, the necessary approvals of the requirements that have been identified and the mechanisms that have been put in place to harmonize so that um, we have uh, tourism uh, stimulated in terms of growth. The second part where we are right now is that um, the five countries have commissioned the development of the Casa Master Integrated Development Plan. And within this plan are two major thematic areas that are critical to the growth of tourism. Uh, the first one is the Tourism Master Plan, which will actually identify areas within Kaza that have got potential for tourism development, areas that will require further private sector investment, what kind of tourist products that can be offered within the Kaza region and how they can be complemented uh, across uh, the five boundaries. And in there again is the infrastructure plan, which we identify the type of infrastructure that is needed within the Kaza area to stimulate the growth of tourism. We're looking at link roads that lead to the nodes of tourism, which are the national parks, issues of air transport uh, in terms of connectivity within the Kaza region, 
how can one fly from Kasane to Kashue National Park in Zambia? So these are the issues that will come out of the Kaza Master Integrated Development Plan. The next one is the issue of the development of the Kaza Univisa. We are at the stage where the five countries have agreed to pilot that uh, Univisa between Zambia and Zimbabwe, uh, hopefully beginning end of this year, and then lessons learned from there will be used to refine the process and extend it to the other three uh, partner countries of Kaza, and hopefully at the end of the day, we have it uh, scaled up at SADC level. So those are some of the measures that the Kaza TFCA has put in place in terms of uh, stimulating tourism. But you may wish also to know that the five countries have been very, very categorical in growth of tourism, that they would want the active participation of local communities, not as beneficiaries at the end of the day, but as active business players within the tourism supply chain. And that is one of the issues that we're working on. How do we capitalize the communities? How do we grow the entrepreneurial capacities among the rural communities so that they can become players in the supply chain and not mere uh, spectators who expect uh, benefits at the end of the day, but they must generate the benefits themselves as economic players. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, any, you see any major obstacles or challenges um, involved in that in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of capacity building? Well, I think in terms of the challenges that are there, the critical challenge that we face is to grow the capacity among communities to transform them to become entrepreneurs. And then secondly, how do we mobilize capital for them in terms of soft loans, which are affordable uh, for them to be able to borrow? And in addition, other than just the communities themselves, how do we also have citizen-owned enterprises to expand their businesses, those that are already in the tourism supply chain and those that wish to enter. How do we facilitate their entry and how do we facilitate their growth within the tourism industry? Now I would like to switch to my left and this is the side where it's about to create uh, touristic offers um, from the demand side, from the source markets and Ines, I would like to ask Ines Carstensen, it's nothing of new that uh, in development cooperation you um, don't only work with uh, government organizations because NGOs are very important um, actors of uh, development cooperation and if you look at the example of ecotourism, um, then uh, you can uh, support natural measures through tourism. So this is a concept that has been existing since the early 90s. And now I would like to know from you, Ines, uh, do you think that food tourists can play a very specific or unusual role in this as an NGO? What is uh, specific about NGO uh, compared to other NGOs? Thank you very much, Wolfgang. First of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here and represent Futuris. It's a big honor to, to, be, here, to be here. And uh, I would like to say that uh, it's been a result of two years' work that we are here now, together with the players that um, are our uh, partners and also two years of work with uh, the KFW and with CASA and finally we can present the results and this sh already shows what we want. For Tourism is an initiative that is a, it's a very new initiative, a very young initiative, it's five years old and uh, it covers uh, big tourist uh, companies. So the question is, what do they have to do with sustainability? But there is a lot because uh, there are many opportunities and we feel this. We feel this in the commitment of these big companies that support us and we feel this in the way how they cooperate in our projects. So come back to the question, what uh, do we actually do? Well, we are not only companies sponsoring different projects. We are not only funding these projects. Uh, this is uh, not a very important element, actually, of our work. What it really matters is that we go to a country and uh, have multi-stakeholder processes. We initiate these processes and we uh, initiate uh, conversation, discussions with local communities. And we're trying to learn from them what do they understand uh, when, we, when I say lodges, what, what, what 
how do they define lodges? And now we have a new project that we have to find standards for sustainable lodge systems. And so uh, this will be the basis of our cooperation. We will meet uh, CASA community members it, uh, organized by the CASA secretary and the secretariat. And we will discuss, we have roundtable discussions in order to develop a new standard. So we will work jointly. And so this time we will uh, take professional companies, we will take the know-how to the round table, to the communities, and we will learn from them in turn. So we will create something new out of this process, something that is completely unique. So this is a very uh, special commitment if big companies um, send their product managers to a certain destination to, to have a cooperation there. And uh, if we're done with this, I, and I think this will take a long, long time. So w once we have a standard, uh, then we plan to release this standard to the c uh, industry. We will test it within the futurist community. Uh, so we will release this standard and we will use it together with organizations like the Global Sustainable Tourism and we will develop them to international standards. So we will uh, have further multi-stakeholder processes and uh, in this way we will be able to um, release uh, this uh, lodging system to, to the free market. This is Futuris. Uh, coming back to the sustainable lodges system, this is a very concrete project. And you have also mentioned that uh, the standard that is to be developed there is harmonized with the GSTC criteria. But now, in some of the Kazakh countries, there are certificate systems. We have Eagle Woods in Namibia, Fairtrade Tourism, South Africa and Botswana. And so we have a standard for ecotourism. Um, do you cooperate with these organizations to, uh, um, so that you don't uh, invent something that uh, already exists? But this is a very practical thing because Futurist has a scientific uh, advisory council and they ensure that we do not develop something that already exists. And this advisory council helps us uh, to consider the existing things already. And the positive in this concept is that we can send an implemented agent so we can appoint somebody at Futuris who will cooperate with us in a professional way together with the CASA Secretariat to match these standards. So we do not want to uh, ignore the existing things. We want something new that we can use for our sales. So everybody should know that this is something that is viable and not, not something new. Now I would like to go more into the practice details, uh, the touristic uh, operator, tourist operators. Jens Leverson, you are the only person in this panel uh, who represents a, a tour operator. Do you actually offer uh, tours or journeys to the Kavaba Zambezi region? I've ha had a look at your website. You offer uh, trips to Namibia and Botswana, but also to Zimbabwe, which is not uh, self-evident, actually. So maybe you can give us a short descrip description of what kind of uh, tours do you offer? Are they sustainable? Uh, so do you respect sustainability aspects? How do you uh, contribute to uh, the protection of the environment? Well, thank you very much. Um, I also represent Futurist, not only the Beko, and it's a big honor to be here. And uh, those who uh, participated in this uh, panel discussions know that it's a big honor to be together with ministers and state secretaries. So thank you very much again. Well, Debeco, I hope that uh, some of you already know this uh, tour operator. We are active in the field of study and experience uh, trips. So it's more than uh, just uh, going to quickly to a country and to understand it. But we really want to contribute to understanding the country, to uh, we uh, uh, looking uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we are looking at the culture of people. So we really want to uh, get to know the country and uh, the culture. So we're doing this for 25 years. And the number of um, the journeys or trips uh, is increasing. Um, maybe that most of you know uh, 
are cooperator uh, at TUI, so we do a lot of round trips and private trips and uh, uh, also ex um, adventure trips. So we have a quite uh, diverse network of different uh, highly intellectual cultural works up to uh, adventure trips. So we have also have a certificate uh, for corporate social uh, responsibility. And we always um, review our trips and uh, also involve the local partners in our organization trips. So Neil mentioned a lot of we have a lot of touch points in the constellation, and it's a very exciting thing. Um, if I think of the Kazi idea, the the best, uh, the most popular uh, trip is the three countries trip, the Namibia, Zimbabwe, Botswana trip, and this is very uh, very encouraging, encouraging because this shows that in our industry, uh, we've uh, so people who are a bit older and well educated uh, are very. Um, it's very popular among these uh, people, and uh, it shows that uh, maybe this is uh, something very important for the CASA project. It has a high potential for the uh, project, and maybe we can um, explore new regions that are not in our offer yet. Uh, these are good keywords. If we look at uh, the offers, in the panel discussion, we heard about the Victoria Falls, which is a self-seller, actually, and the Caprimi Strip in Namibia is also explored in the Okavango Delta in Namibia. So it's clear that these are touristic magnets. But what about um, within the framework of a cooperation with Futuris, what about um, the exploration of new exciting areas in Zambia and Angola? Is this something that a uh, tour operator can uh, organize in a short time? Can you imagine that uh, other members of Futuris, Ken Odebiko and other members could maybe initiate first flagship tours into the untouched areas? That's what's so encouraging about this big project. A premium award destination is developing, and you can observe this um, in real time. And you feel this energy behind it and the commitment. And the changes have started at the ITB. There is a Kazakhstan, a joint Kazakhstan. So when I saw it, um, there were always plenty of visitors, so people are interested. Through the brand name CASA, um, we want to see effects in the entire region. And my dream, which is quite realistic, because I can influence the product manager because it's my wife. And we uh, uh, there will be a five-country trip to CASA and that in the near future. We will try this with the support, of course, of the CASA secretariat, the colleagues, with whom we are in contact, we will take it up. Of course, we need some support in partnership, hand in hand, to develop these projects and the respective infrastructure. But a lot has been started. It's not yet a brand name. CASA is not yet a brand name. When you ask a person on the street, people probably won't know the brand name CASA, but to build this brand out of the region, together with the private sector in Germany, with a competence which we have, which we can add to the development of the project, to organize tourists which are developed from inside, which are designed for our customers with get the vector of our experience to the uh, to, to the development corporation side uh, <coughs> mr Wallenstein, the kfw is has just been given or indirectly the big check uh, to the casa project um, <coughs> um, I think it's quite interesting because so far the German Development Corporation has not really had a comprehensive strategy to deal with tourism as a sector. Or let, let me say, tourism so far is not a priority for the German Development Corporation. So in this sense, I think you're also kind of entering perhaps to a certain degree new territory. And I would like to know, you know, after having signed indirectly 
this agreement, you know, between the Kaiser Secretariat uh, and Futuris or being involved in this, um, wh where do you see the specific potential of this cooperation and maybe also the, po the, 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 the potential pitfalls of a cooperation with the large German tour operators? At first, uh, you're totally right. Tourism is normally not not a topic of uh, development cooperation. And, uh, uh, but, however, tourism creates jobs and income. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it makes interesting in the case of a development of national park area in uh, region. And, uh, and uh, in this respect, we look at tourism as a factor to uh, poverty alleviation, get income into for poor people in normally very remote areas where they don't have really much chances of other income and get income to government agencies which are looking after the conservancies. Um, we see ourselves a bit in, in this direction as an honest broker between different partners we have um, uh, in this game. We, do work together with uh, large and they're very professional NGOs like uh, WWF, like Peace Park Foundation. Um, we do have uh, government agencies which are quite engaged. We could see that from the, from the first uh, round here. I think that was quite impressive, the engagement of the politicians in, uh, in this uh, case. And they are the ones who are the really leading ones. And uh, well, as it's income, and if you want to get the income also to the poor people, uh, then it's income sharing. And uh, that is normally a question where it's getting a bit more difficult. <laughs> and there we do see our role like, when, uh, a little bit to look for, for a fair and, and uh, for fair contracts uh, between different parties and to support the Kaiser Secretariat in this direction. So that is one of uh, the parts where we are interested in. And that's on the same side, it is a bit the, the danger of this, is in, uh, which is in the uh, development. And, uh, as tourism industry comes in normally not with a profit interest, and, uh, so there's a certain danger that uh, it would go into the wrong direction. That means that we have to support the structures on the other side uh, to give a fair level playing field between the uh, two partners. Maybe another question connecting to that. Um, tourism in comparison to other economic development perspectives in an area like Gaza. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure there are others. Copper has been mentioned, um, as, you know, in the larger area, agriculture, sustainable, natural resource use, etc. Um, I would like to know where you see tourism in comparison to these other alternatives. And in particular, I'd be curious um, to get your opinion on how you see the vulnerability of especially long-haul tourism in view of climate change, Africa is going to be, or is expected to be, one of the continents that is going to be the, mo the most severely hit by climate change. Um, economic crisis in source markets, etc. We've heard this also in the first panel discussion, that tourism can be sort of sensitive industry. Uh, do you see a particular risk in that? Or would you say, okay, we have a more comprehensive strategy that w where tourism is a part of several other options that we have for sustainable land use? If one comes to the first part, the, the, the question of, of other income or other economic activities, uh, there was a, I had a very, very interesting uh, visit in, in the Caprivi in uh, Strip with in, uh, communities there. And the community explained that since the uh, introduction of uh, hunting zones, and one has to say that in the, since these hunting zones, the uh, number of wildlife increased uh, afterwards. It's a very controlled hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, since the introduction of hunting zones, uh, they had more income mm, uh, from these hunting licenses, uh, where they get 30 percent, mm, uh, than they have from all the um, agricultural activities. Mm, uh, that shows a bit the potential for the mm, uh, for the people living there. Mm, uh, 
Um, as regards uh, climate change aspects, you're totally right. Then especially the Southern Africa region is, uh, will be quite vulnerable to uh, these aspects. However, I think also in this direction, an intact nature mm, uh, will be more able to adapt mm, uh, to changes in, uh, in climate mm, uh, than if we have a destructured mm, land use mm, uh, for different uses, which will be more mm, uh, dangerous, I think, for, mm, uh, for this development. Okay, thank you. Um, Moving over to uh, Mr. Heinrich, um, you have been mentioned as one of the organizations that are being active in the Casa area. Um, Mr. Wallenstein has been quite optimistic about the role of tourism in this context, uh, con uh, context of nature conservation. And I think we've seen, if we look at the experiences throughout the world, um, I think there is certainly a number of success stories where Tourism, in fact, has been very successful in supporting nature conservation, but we also have quite a few examples where the opposite has, uh, has been the case. So um, I would like to know how you, as the, uh, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, in, in your activities in CASA, would make sure that tourism actually does play a positive role for community development and for um, biodiversity conservation. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I must say that I consider tourism in this very place as rather a chance than, than a challenge, rather um, an opportunity to, to gain um, a benefits for both the economical development, the social development and also nature conservation than, um, than that I would expect major threats to, to biodiversity there. But you're, you're totally right. We have to secure that things will be done in the right way, and I'm, I'm, I was uh, happy to hear from, from Victor that um, planning uh, ha have been started with the, with the five countries uh, to work on also a tourism strategy. I think that's exactly what we will need in this place, because um, we all will deal from the conservation side and from the tourism sector, which is, by the way, the biggest economical sector of the world. So we are not speaking about little minor actors, we will speak about uh, very potential actors. Um, if they start investing at the wrong places, even within this huge area, which is bigger than Germany, 50% bigger than Germany, if they are starting investing at the wrong places, nature can be harmed significantly. And we have to be sure that this doesn't happen. On the other side, um, uh, I, I definitely see good chances to, to combine all those three aspects, economy, social aspects, conservation, um, by uh, a touristic development. And at the end of the day, I must say, what are the alternatives for the region? I think among all the alternatives that I could uh, uh, think about, tourism is the one that fits best. But only if we are doing this in the right way. This is, this is key. Um, you said, you just mentioned investing in the wrong places. What would be a wrong place, um, for example, um, in, the, in the case of Kazo, perhaps? couple of, um, of rivers in, in the region. If we, don't, uh, if we don't care, those rivers can, can suffer under um, touristic development, either because um, um, the shore of the river will be um, plastered with, <laughs> with, with lodges, building hotels, etc. On the other side, um, uh, we, we have to care that, that drink water, um, the amount of drink water that we take from the freshwater ecosystems has to be sustainable. Yeah. In, uh, in another African region, it is in Kenya at the Mara River, um, we are working closely with lodges in order to, uh, to change their water management because the amount of water they are taking from the Mara River um, has harmed the river, has harmed the water flow of the river. And um, if, we, um, well, if we're not careful, uh, something similar like might also happen uh, in this region. This is only one little example. Another example is the waste management. And again, it's always up to the location. Um, we have to take care that not all iconic uh, locations in the region will be impacted by, by tourism. Yeah? Um, a couple of waterfalls have been mentioned. I wouldn't like to see hotels at, at each of those waterfalls because once we are doing this, then we would destroy exactly the value that people will go for. And uh, I think it's not in the interest of the industry itself to destroy the values people want to see. So we have to be, I think, smart. But um, I don't want to overcomplicate these things. I think it's absolutely feasible there. 
I just want to warn a little bit and raise this flag. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chiamudala, um, what um, has just been mentioned by Mr. Heinrich, is that part of your management plans, um, trying to avoid overdevelopment, or do you see this as a, as a danger of certain river banks, um, waterfalls? Well, I think in terms of growing tourism, as it has already been indicated, it's a very sensitive industry. And uh, its resource base, particularly for the Kaza region, is uh, nature. So we have to ensure that any tourism development is sustainable within the context of environmental management. And the purpose of the Casa Master IDP and uh, with the tourism development plan that will be contained in that plan is to actually identify these areas in terms of also their sensitivities to the impacts that will come as a result of tourism and then see how best we can mitigate uh, those impacts so that we're able to secure the resource base for this generation and for the generations to come. And I think the countries have also put in place, they have the uh, regulatory mechanisms on environmental impact assessment that will actually also guide the development of uh, the tourism sites uh, that are quite sensitive to, uh, to impacts of tourism. Thank you. Um, my last question goes to Mr. Ndiaye of the World Tourism Organization. Um, Mr. Ndiaye. The UNWTO is quite active uh, all over the world um, and Africa is certainly a continent of great natural and cultural potential as we've heard. Um, so um, I, I would like to know what the World Tourism Organization is doing or is planning to do in particular in the Kaza area in these five countries in order to support or help promote things that have been mentioned here like creating you know a visa regime which kind of allows easy uh, border crossing etc um, and uh, how in particular um, the world tourism organization would get involved in alleviating poverty because that is also one of your main focus areas in that area thank you very much professor uh, i would like first to uh, add my voice to those who have uh, my predecessor to thank uh, the organizers of uh, this forum on this very uh, interesting topic, which is the first experience uh, by grouping uh, so many countries joining their effort to protect environment and to develop tourism. Uh, UNWTO, as a UN specialized agency, uh, has uh, elaborated since 2005 a program we call STEP. It's uh, an acronymic meaning that sustainable tourism for eliminating poverty. By doing so, the objective we are uh, really targeting is uh, uh, how to better involve the local community in the management of tourism and to ensure that the community will benefit rightfully of the uh, benefits, of course, that uh, uh, tourism is, is, is generating. Uh, by doing so, uh, uh, this model is really a very interesting one, as I said, because the uh, local community will not be considered as spectators, but uh, really uh, playing a key role. By doing so, we want also to pay specific attention to the area of uh, environment. As you all know, Africa uh, assess is uh, mainly relying on environment, and uh, we want to develop a sustainable tourism by the local committee uh, and also uh, to be sure that uh, a kind of public partnership will be uh, uh, the basis of this kind of, of, of development. Of course, taking into consideration that the situation will also uh, give a win-win situation. This is very important. Uh, WTO is also helping, uh, uh, can help in different ways. Uh, different ways, uh, and specifically two ways. The first one is uh, in the Kaza area, for example, if uh, countries are uh, assisting or giving, uh, asking our assistance, we can do it on two ways. The first one will be uh, formulating project proposal where local community, as I said already, will be the center, the heart of this project giving opportunities for uh, poverty reduction, and also giving them the opportunity of business. Because at the end of the day, what we want is that local community 
can have their own business in tourism. This is the first uh, way of doing it. And the second aspect is, once the proposals, for example, are approved by the uh, stakeholders, then the WTO can also help to raise funds. Raising funds, and uh, in this case, let me just inform you that uh, since this uh, program is launched in 2005, with the assistance of uh, the Korean uh, government, because we have a foundation, it's really uh, financing our project. Okay. And since it has been uh, implemented, we have on board so many other donors, partners who are coming because they are convinced that our proposals, our model is really the right one. Okay, thank you very much. Um, our time is almost up, but I would like to conclude maybe with a very short statement by, by each of you, if, if you would like. Um, so we have tried to talk a little bit more about concrete action. I would like to maybe move back to, to the vision um, quest, vision thing that we've mentioned before. Um, where would you see tourism in Casa in five years from now? What, what kind of tourism would you see? What is your vision? Maybe, would you like to start, Mr. Siamudala? Well, I think our, um, uh, what we see tourism in five years is that we'd like it to be the major business within the Kaza region, mm -hmm. a business that contributes to the well-being of society, even at community level, to see communities as active business players in the tourism supply chain, to see government um, getting the required revenue through the right pricing mechanism for the tourism products. Uh, so that um, the income generated from tourism can help governments to support uh, the social sector. We would like to see a tourism industry that is tourism without borders, the free movement of tourists across the Kaza landscape. And uh, we would like to see tourism as part of the larger picture that will stimulate the growth of the green economy, which is the future of this world. Excellent. Thank you very much. How do you see your role in this? <laughs> Very briefly, one or two sentences, <laughs> if that's possible at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I, I believe that we can start multi-stakeholder dialogues, dialogues between the private sector and, well, the tourism industry and the local communities from, Staza, from Casa. And we hope that we have got the mandate and the creative power to work together and to support uh, the destinations and the CASA to implement sustainable development and that we learn from each other. Thank you oh, very much. Very good, thank you. <laughs> Maybe to the specific, how, where do you see Gebeko specifically in this picture? Well, I think the CASA region will be number one destination for Gebeko in five years. This is our <laughs> 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 nice target, so... <laughs> Um, so, number one destination with the multi-country uh, round trips, of course, um, flying in with Casa Airlines, of course, to the destination. <laughs> and, uh, well, a lot of um, happy people coming there, living there, experience uh, the exchange between each other. Um, I, I like this, this African proverb so much, um, which says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So, for me, this is a a perfect uh, example for cooperation between five countries, between Futuris as a, uh, like a, like a, like a group of, of uh, people and of, of uh, enterprises. So it's a multi-cooperation and that's a good sign for the next five years. Sounds good. <laughs> Applause for that. <laughs> Mr. Wollensin? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more and more difficult towards the end, right? <laughs> I would like to see that tourism gives uh, for all stakeholders uh, the interest to keep uh, this biodiversity of a global importance uh, and see that it is for everybody in involved in an advantage to keep this. Uh, and I do hope that uh, the communities around will really uh, get part of the profits. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Heinrich, let's just, um, let's just suppose that your warnings have been um, followed. How would tourism in Casa look like in five years from the point of view of the WWF? 
Yeah, well, um, I, I need not just uh, look uh, into the future, I can also look into the present and into the past because I think um, one of the best examples worldwide um, uh, where we um, achieve to link conservation with uh, poverty alleviation is the model of uh, the nature conservancies in uh, Namibia which was actually started once as the campfire project in Zimbabwe, if I'm informed correctly. Um, it's simply fantastic and fascinating to see how this works and how it really, really improved the conditions of the people. And my vision goes to the people of the region. Um, we have to engage them and we have to always secure that they are benefiting from both the economical um, development and, and conservation. And this very region has, has shown that um, has proven that we can uh, combine this and to, to, to distribute this model um, to other countries of the region. And we are just currently working on, on, on Zambia to, to introduce conservancies there. Um, this would be my, my vision and I think also um, companies like Gebeco, I think this, this fits perfectly. I guess uh, from a European perspective, I think that's exactly the kind um, also of Africa that, that people want to see and where we can also link cultures with each other without harming cultures. Sounds very good. Thank you. Final words to Mr. Ndaye. Um, one, two sentences to what's your vision for sustainable tourism in Africa maybe as a whole? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, this uh, example of Casa, where five countries are joining their efforts, is really showing us that how tourists really can be benefit for the local community. Uh, I would like also to send a kind of appeal to all governments, African governments, that tourism is a very good opportunity to develop the countries. And also to say, uh, for this to happen, it's very important that the government put priority on this sector. And without the political willingness, we will not go far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, now we have a, another small ceremony, and that is going to be uh, the signing of the agreement uh, between Futurist and the Casa Secretariat uh, on working together on sustainable tourism development. And I believe that you, Mr. Siamudala, and Mr. Holvason are going to sign this document. Would you like to go ahead and do that? If you give us a table. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, uh, maybe uh, we take this one. Oh, it's coming from the left. No, no. It's, oh, it's okay. It's well organized. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Ja, Halle, welche Halle? Halle 20. Halle 20.